everybody. By the end of this video, you will have a good understanding of how service providers work and how they fit in with the bigger picture of the IOC container. This is a continuation of a previous video called Understanding the IOC Container. So if you haven't seen that yet, I recommend you go back and watch that before watching this one. Now, if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel because pretty soon we'll be going through the example given in the documentation to implement our own service provider using the BQ library. So hit subscribe and let's get started. Okay, hopefully now you've taken a few minutes to go through those functions again. And I would even recommend later on you poke around the rest of the class to see what's going on. For now though, let's take a look at bind and singleton because it may not be entirely clear where you actually call these functions to register your bindings. Now Adonis has its own bindings to register and it does so through service providers and that's how we do the same. Now the best way to kind of get your head around what a service provider is, is to actually look at one in the source code. So if you jump down to Within node modules, Adonis.js, you'll have a framework directory and you'll have a providers directory there. We have two providers, the view provider and the app provider. The app one is rather large. We'll start with the view one to get our head around what's available. So each provider gives us two functions. We have a register function and a boot function. You'll see this in the documentation here. It explains that IOC bind or singleton, they are called with the service providers. Here are two methods, register and boot. The register method is used for registering the binding. So that is putting our instructions and our namespace into that bindings object for later use. The boot method is available, is called I should say, when all the bindings are done and at that point we're actually able to use something. So if we need to use one of our bindings to bootstrap some state as it said right here, then that's the time to do it. You won't do it in the register function, you'll do it in the boot function. Later when we look at igniter right after this, you'll see the order in which all of these are called. So going down a little bit, the simple example that's given here is if within the views we want to add a globally available date time right here, the boot method is where we'll do that. So let's jump back to the source code and we'll look at the view provider. You can see that the view provider is uh, creating an object, a view object, and it's a singleton. So it's only going to be created once and from then on it will be cached and the cache value will be returned. We know that. Now here is our closure. Remember we pass in two things to singleton. We pass in a namespace and a closure. Here is our namespace. Adonis slash source slash view. And here is our closure, the anonymous function. App. Now how did app get there? Well recall in our IOC container class when resolve binding is called, so this is when we're actually using the instructions that we're looking at, hold on, that we're looking at over here. Then the closure, that's this function right here, is actually being called, it's being invoked, and this is being passed in. What is this? The IOC container. So the app right here is the IOC container. Now, here are the instructions to actually create our new object. We use a few things and then we return the new object. Now keep in mind, this is just the close, this isn't actually being invoked right here. In the register function, this is just the function definition. It is not being invoked. So it's perfectly fine to see the app.use right here. That threw me off a little bit at first, but I had to remind myself that this isn't being used yet. It's not being used until the, the binding is being resolved later when a use function is being called. So that's it right there. Now recall register is just for registering these bindings. It doesn't actually call them. The boot method is there if you want to call them. And in this case with the view provider, we're calling them, calling a bunch of other bindings with this.app.use this might throw you off. Where is this coming from? This refers to the service provider. And if you look at the actual service provider class from which we are extending, that's just up here in fold again, service provider, you'll see that the IOC is being passed in. There is a elsewhere in the code where the service provider is being called once and the IOC is being passed in. So that's just where that is coming from. It's a little 
confusing because you you just happen to have access to the IOC everywhere it seems but jumping around a little bit here and there you'll start to see where it all lines up so the boot method here what's happening is some things are being bootstrapped for the view provider so you can read through the comments and you can see what's actually being done but at this point this dot app dot use use is actually being called the bindings have all been registered they're now available so again going back to the documentation you can see that at this point says the boot method is called when all providers have been registered and it's the right time to use any existing bindings if you want to bootstrap any sort of state and that's why adding something like the date time as a global uh, variable for the views is uh, is fine to do right here in the boot method now there's another example provided down below where we look at the bq uh, library and the boot method is not used so it's not always needed the register method on the other hand would be because that's how you actually make your binding you actually add your entry into the ioc container for later use so the register method will be used this is optional as you can see right there okay let's jump back to our source code and i want to take you through how the config object works the config class so this is the 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 utility that's being called right here config get now the config is a uh, it's a binding that's created in the app provider so we'll go to this and we'll jump down to the register function which is right down here you can see there's a lot going on in the app provider the register config is what we'll look at this is where our config singleton is being created notice it's a singleton and this object helps us uh, retrieve configuration objects for our other objects so configuration settings and whatnot and you'll see it throughout the code if you jump down to view provider again you'll see it right here config.get and it's getting a configuration for whatever it's building here and you'll see this again and again so it's important that you understand how it works so it's a singleton it's found the code for it is actually found down here under source config in index it uh, let's see it uses some helpers it, you require the config source right here as I said and what does it take it takes a config path now if you jump into helpers which is found down in igniter source helpers index you'll find that the config path is actually the configuration directory just above in the source uh, in the root of our project so under the app directory we have config right there so let's jump into that code so you can see that I'm not lying in helpers we find config path right there and there's our return statement we're returning this app root which is of course the root of the project and then the config directory that is the config path that's being set so let's jump up to config right here again so when it's being created the config path is being passed in app provider here we go new config that's calling this if you look to source config index that's calling the class of course after you call the new keyword whatever you pass in comes in through the constructor so there's our config path right here okay which is the slash it's the root of the project slash config and this has a get method on it which is being used right here in our view provider the get method and what are you actually passing in here let's go let's check out config and we'll go to the get method that's a key now the key the first part of the key will refer to the file in the config directory so let's go to our view provider let's see how this lines up app there's our app file and within the app file the app is the app file is returning it's exporting a object and so views would be a property on that object and then within the views object we're looking at the cache property so let's go to app we should find views and then cache so here's app there's views right there somewhere in the middle of the file and there's cache so this is what's actually being used right here to set up our view our view object so that's pretty cool it's important to know how this works because when it comes time to start registering our own bindings we will use this config to actually fetch our own configuration for whatever we're doing and in the documentation there's an example provided and we'll see how this is being used for that 
So take a few moments, look through the config object again, how it's being used in, say, other places in the app provider. Take a look at that, and uh, then we'll jump on to the next part where we go through the actual example in the documentation, and that'll help solidify some of these concepts.